Bishop Patrick Wooden. God bless everybody. It's good to be here. I need you to start and uh, help me and join in. And let's give praises to the God of the Bible. Will everybody clap their hands and praise him because he's good and worthy to be praised. Amen. I think we got a, there's a bunch of believers in here tonight, today, who come to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and save this nation. You know, with, we had a delay with uh, the, uh, the microphones, and I said to one of the gentlemen in the back, you know, in the, in the black church, when the, when the preacher gets ready to preach, we always have a sermonic selection. So while we were waiting, wasn't there some beautiful singing that took place? We thank God for this opportunity. I'm honored to stand before you today uh, to speak to you just for a few minutes. I think that this is a marvelous uh, gathering and we're fighting for a worthy cause because we're fighting for the glory of God and for our nation. And if you don't think these times are serious, um, you're not thinking because uh, these are serious times, but I believe that we can make a difference. And the Lord has given me, the act, when I was asked to speak uh, to the Salt and Light Conference, and they, they told me the time that I had, and uh, the Lord put something on my heart to share with you today. I want, to know, I want you to know that some of our church members are here today. Some of the brothers came with me from the church, and I got here and saw one of our members on the front row, uh, Sister Yvonne. So we're grateful uh, to be here, and I'm going to read a passage. Now, I'm a preacher, all right? I'm not running for office. I, I love the nation. As you can see, I'm a black guy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you know what? God got that right. He got it right when he made me black. He got it right when he made me a male. I'm not one of those who argue with their makers. You know, we live in a day now where people are arguing with God. The guy standing saying, hey God, I'm a woman. And the woman is standing saying, hey, God, I'm a man. No, the Lord got it right. And I understand what all people say when they say that they don't see color. I actually do. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's beautiful that God made some people white. He made some people black. He made some people uh, Asian. God made a kaleidoscope of people. And you know what he told us to do? He told us to love each other. He told us to pray for each other and to treat each other right. Am I right about that? I want to read something to you, and, uh, and I want to challenge you. So I've been pretty, uh, I've been as nice, probably, uh, as I will be. And uh, I have something to say that the Lord placed on my heart to say to you. And I want to say to my wife, Pamela, who is watching, who will be married 41 years in December. God bless you, dear. I am the proud pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I am a bishop in the Church of God in Christ. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 says, Now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there, old English, there be, there are divisions among you. And Paul says, I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the approved things. Approved things, because I think that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for norms. We're fighting for right. We're fighting for our nation. We're fighting for things that God has stamped and that God has declared to be righteous. And we're fighting for things that all of us believe was, were, were right and normal, uh, except for a few years ago. None of us thought that we'd have to fight. I enjoyed Governor McCory, none of us thought that we'd have to fight to keep men out of women's bathrooms. But we did. Isn't that amazing? 
I thank God my mom is still with us. She's 86 years of age. I have a lovely wife. I have a wonderful daughter. I have a beautiful granddaughter. And I'm telling you, if I, we were out at a restaurant and they went to the ladies' room and I saw some guy go in there, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> I promise you, that wouldn't work. How about it, guys? How about it, dads? Husbands? Amen. I'm afraid, as we're fighting this battle, that the world has made the church afraid to be the church. We're too afraid of being labeled. We're too afraid of being called names. We're so afraid to, that we're going to be called judgmental that we're losing our ability to make judgments. You know, they want to silence us and cause us to go along just to get along. But I believe that there's still a difference between right and wrong. I don't think it's hate, I don't think it's hate to stress the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, righteousness and unrighteousness. There are still approved things and there are still uh, yet disapproved things. And I think that we ought to fight for those things. I don't think the things are based on skin color. I don't think they're based on status, education, nor national origin, but they're based on how they measure up to the light of the world. Our Lord said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And the standards of Christ are the light of the world. And listen, in this salt and light conference, and I know that uh, there is the politics and all of that, but listen, Jesus is the one who introduced us to the concepts of light of the world and salt of the earth. And Christ said as long as he's in the world, that he's the light of the world. And then when he left, he declared uh, to us that we're now the light of the world, but we can't be the light of the world if we began to be behave just like the world. Now listen, we conservatives, we've got to know that our conservatism is based in scripture. And there are certain things that we've got to stand on and I see some dangerous shifts taking place. It's on conservative TV now that you can see a man six feet, uh, five inches tall or more with a 13, size 13 or 14 shoe calling himself uh, Caitlin when his name is Bruce and yet the conservative interviewer calls him a she. There's something wrong with that. There is something wrong with that. And uh, we're saying, you know, to get votes, we just, you can't say anything. But notice, it's growing more and more and more. People whose lifestyles that, that, that do not agree with Scripture, men who are marrying men, women who are marrying women, and they get on television on our conservative stations and tell us that these are their lifestyles, and yet... To, because they're smart, articulate, and we feel that we will be judged by the world, we're silent. Paul said to the church at Corinth, I've got something to tell you. Your, your coming together is not good. You're getting worse because the, they began to treat the holy and reverent communion as though it was an unholy thing. And we've got to reclaim the White House. We've got to reclaim uh, the Senate. We've got to reclaim uh, Congress. But we also must be the light. We've got to show the world how it is done. And we won't show them trying to make them like us. They'll probably never like us. I had to come to realize that as a conservative brother that there are people who are not going to like me. They may think that I'm a, a sellout, which I'm not. I tell people in Raleigh, I'm the blackest preacher in my city. I fight for the unborn. I fight for the definition of marriage. Who is, what group of people are being more adversely affected by abortion than African Americans? Who do Planned Parenthood target more than they target African Americans? 
They're bringing in Hispanics. We're bringing in Afghanis. We're bringing in other people, but we're killing African Americans. And we're calling that uh, some type of civil right. But the first civil right is the right to be born. Now somebody shout amen. Conservatism is not racism. You're not being racist to require that you show an ID to vote. That's simple. I'd be ashamed. I'd be ashamed to make the argument, well, I can't get an ID. We can get an ID for everything, anything else. So well, some people are old and, and they can't get out. They, they, have, they have something to show when they cash that check. Oh yeah, we're living in a time where we need the church. We need the black church, we need the white church, we need all churches to be the church. First and foremost, before Republicans, before we're Democrats, before we're conservative, before we're liberal, we've got to be the church. And God said to the church, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God said, I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin and heal the land. And you know what? We can't pray one way and vote another. The prayers have got to line up with the vote. You can't pray for the life of the unborn and then go vote for a politician who is for a woman's right to choose. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. I'll tell you, my time is about up, and I thank you for inviting me, but I want you to know today we're loaded for bear. And there are people who love this nation, but as others have said before me, the greatness of America is, a, is America's adherence to the God of this book. And I'll tell you, we're not just people of faith. I want to know how many born again, Jesus loving, blood bought Christians, born again, saved people do we have? Let us pray, Father, save our nation. Father, we ask that you will move in a mighty way and touch this nation. Use every one of us and turn, use every one of us to call this, na this nation to return to you. You are our hope. You are our strength. You are, you're our God. You're our shield. You've also become our salvation. So we look to you. We vote in your direction and we stand for this country in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you all.